all the birds, all the big birds fly in and they'll fly to their tree and get, get in the tree and, and uh, be still. So uh, I think it's good speculation that what the Indians were seeing, they, they'd hear a st- thunderstorm coming and be, st- be thundering. And here would come these giant birds getting away out of the way of the thunderstorm so that it wouldn't get struck by lightning. And they would end, end up, you know, uh, uh, lighting on this mountain top over there where the Indians could see them or saw them landing. But you know this thing. Uh, if you blow it up, it looks more like a looks more like a pterodactyl with his wings um, up in a V shape, and they're probably actually longer than this photograph suggests. Can't see his tail, but um, <clears throat> that's pretty wild. So here's a here's the point. If uh, if these things went extinct, what are they doing flying around in our skies? That, that's the whole point, and 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 as we're you know when people see it, I mean, if you go out looking for these things, you'll never find them. It's just by chance. It's, you know, it happens when it happens. Yeah, and I well, believe that was everybody, in New Jersey. What, James? I believe that was in New Jersey. Yeah, with their phones Friday. and dash cams now, we're going to see a lot more stuff. Okay, James, you said it was in New Jersey and not Tennessee. Yeah, it was, I believe it was in New Jersey because uh, it says there in the article that the guy was coming home, going home to work to Pennsylvania from New Jersey. So okay. I believe that's where it was taken, yeah. Yeah, okay. In New Jersey of all states, or, you know. Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> well, and it looks, mm-hmm. if, if you guys have ever driven from the east side of Texas to the east coast, <laughs> uh the view is five million trees. That's all you're going to see. And and what's in those woods out there? Man, nobody knows what's out there. So, uh, but with dash cams and photographs or cameras, we're going to start seeing more of this stuff. Well, especially because people have it on for their own protection. You know, they're out driving. And, hey, come on, you can just, re, you know, every time you go out, you just reset the camera. So you, if nothing happens, it, they do it for case they get an accident or whatever. They got proof of what happened. But, you know, then when you have a situation like this, if you know, again, if that's a real photo or not, I, I looked at it and studied it. And I at this point, I haven't been able to prove it's real, but I haven't been able to prove it's it's fake either. Yeah. 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 I think you got to. You got to uh, believe stuff with a with an open eye. You know, believe it long enough to research it. If you doubt everything, you won't research anything. You won't find out anything. I just but wonder if you you know, go okay. Let me check into it. You will, we'll find out. I wonder if they do exist. What do they eat? <laughs> I think pterodactyls eat. Uh, I think they eat animals, and and uh, the eat the eat children are or small adults. That lady uh, down in Mexico, uh, she was Mexican and was at this uh, at the uh, the Hilton Hotel there in San Antonio, Texas, on Blanco Road, mind you. I had I was displaying or uh, unveiling the big uh, Mastodon, a Fortress Mastodon I restored, and she was waiting, you know, doing the uh, busboy type stuff. And she saw the fossil, and she came over in broken English, was telling me about that one of her friends down in uh, uh, one of the mountainous regions down there where all these things uh, uh, get reported, said that her little sisters were 7 and 12, and they're, they're little bitty little girls, right, not very heavy. So this big bird flew down and tried to grab one of them, probably a the small one. It was at dusk. They were going to the little restroom out there. And I terrified the girls. And I asked her, I said, well, did he have feathers? Uh, no, no, no feathers. I said, well, did he have fur? And she didn't know what fur was. But uh, I, that's down there where they see these big pterodactyls that have got a wingspan of maybe 11, 12 feet uh, across. They could pick up a, a seven-year-old child and take it to their cave. And, the, you know, it's terrible to think about it. But, you know, there have been places where... Uh, <clears throat> Somebody, Gary, you may know the story. <clears throat> they found a cave or something just full of, of bones, human bones and all that. It was up like on a mountain. 
and nobody but an eagle or a pterodactyl could get up there. Uh, there wouldn't be like a coyote dragging people up there or anything. And it was pretty freaky, and they figured got to be something, you know, uh, that could fly in there and fly out. Uh, eagles, you know, they, they could pick up a pretty good-sized animal. But these big birds that they see that look like a giant crow, uh, <clears throat> those things have a have a, wide, a wing, wing spread as big as a Cessna. They've, they've been some up, up there in Alaska. And the yep. guy in a Cessna would be flying, and here's the darn thing flying below him. And he said it was as big as his airplane. Now, that could pick up a child for sure. In fact, they... Uh, the Indians say they used to pick up baby buffalo. Well, baby buffalo, if it's just born, weighs a good 100 pounds, you know, 75 pounds. Wow. So, uh, a little scary. <laughs> More than a little scary. It is real scary. So, you know, I, I, yeah. can you imagine where we're at up here in the Pacific Northwest? We got eagles. And when I had my, when they were still alive, my little uh, terrier, uh, you know, part terrier, part poodle, would go out to do its business. We, you know, because we're all surrounded. I got two acres of cedar trees. And you you see on top of the trees, these eagles just looking. And I, you know, I was so scared if I wasn't with the dog right, you know, right next to it, they would come down and and take (laughs) it. In fact, one day I was driving home. This is about a year ago. And there was a cat running across the street in front of me on the main road. And an eagle just swooped down, and that was the end of the cat. Wow, really? Got the cat. Yeah, and it was a big-sized cat. It wasn't a little cat. And that cat didn't even even realize what happened. I mean, that, that eagle just swept down so fast and grabbed it and, and took right back up. Wow. Well, you know, that's a little like the thing down in Florida. <clears throat> uh, people lose their dogs, these old crocodiles. They can come up out of the water and get on land really fast, faster than a dog can back up and run away. And uh, they'll eat a poodle. And, you know, that's why people shouldn't let their little, little kids go out on the edge of these bayous and creeks and things because their crocodiles will come right up and get you. They take down a whole man, a grown man. Hey, one of our guests, I got, I, and James, you remember who it was? It was a couple of weeks ago. I think it was Rob, but maybe I was wrong. Uh, lived in Florida, and he would yeah. go swimming in the canal. And he did. That's he just moved, bought a house, you know. And here he is on the, the you know the canal with all the boats and stuff, right? And he would go swimming in it. And one day he noticed there was something in there besides him swimming. And he said that's the last time he went swimming when he saw one of those gators. Yep, it was Rob. Yeah, oh. and and yep. They will get you. Hey, did well, you? Well, and now down in Florida, you got the probably uh, uh, boas, you know, the people let go. Huge things. Yes. Oh, hey, <laughs> Joe, I'm going to tell you a little story that I got a lot of email on from last night. Uh-oh. In Florida, <laughs> a guy goes into, you know, dinner at a, at a nice restaurant, right? He decides... <laughs> You know, I need to go use the bathroom. Uh, so he goes in the stall. He sits down, and something grabs his testicles. Oh! It, you know what it was? A python. Uh, it somehow ooh. worked his way through the sewer system, whatever, and it was coming out the toilet bowl, bowl, and saw you know his, uh, his manhood there and grabbed a hold of it. That's all I read of the article. That was enough of it to me. But I tell you what, I, that's it scared. And in and, and Florida, it's so bad with these snakes that they, they, they got a bounty on them. I mean, you know, it, they're everywhere. And as the climate is getting more screwed up, there's more of these things. Well, and they're, <clears throat> I don't know if they're, they're more hunters now. They're less, I think there are less hunters now. Because used to be people out in the country would, uh, <clears throat> they, they hunted, they ate what they killed, and now maybe it's not so much that way. <clears throat> so all these things just proliferate out there, and heck, those big old snakes, man. You know, how are you going to get rid of those things unless you kill every single one you find and you send everybody out there to kill them? Uh, I mean, golly, 
that could have, uh, I can't imagine. Uh, yeah. Don't tell me the rest <laughs> of the story. It's, no, I, I didn't read any more than that. I'll be honest with you. I read that, and as soon as it, I, it said it clamped onto the guys, you know what? And I figured, you know, I, I just look at. There's been cases where people, like in India, for example, would would take a nap, and they wake up finding that half their body is you know, not where it should be. It's inside of a snake. I mean, you know, it, yeah. it, it, it's scary. Now, was it you It told me, or was it somebody else told me that cobras, if you go in, was it, and try to kill a cobra and you don't kill it, that it, it, they have a memory and they'll look for you? Yeah, there's a, my nephew is a, uh, in the <clears throat> highway materials business or uh, machines. And he, they, he's been called to India a few times. Well, he's also a minister. So when he's over there, he goes to one of our churches in India. And uh, these are Indians. You know, they live <clears throat> like, like you do over there. And the the little place, I guess the church or wherever, uh, a lot of them sleep on the floor. And they sleep, you know, it's, it's really hot, so they don't really need much. And... Uh, Somebody tried to kill a cobra, didn't succeed, and that thing came in in the middle of the night, found that guy or that person, and killed him. Bit him. Mm. So, yeah. You know, I saw a thing the other day. It, I don't think it's Photoshop. There's some people stopped on the road. They're looking at this uh, a cobra, a two-headed cobra. Did y'all see that? No. Mm-mm. Nope. Well, you know, that's like two-headed calves, two-headed cats, two-headed frogs. That is not uncommon. I think that's probably the real thing, which brings up the uh, uh, subject of Hydra, you know, the, the many-headed uh, snake. Isn't that what it's called, Hydra? Uh-huh. Uh, makes you wonder, was there really a snake that had multiple heads by some, some uh, gene malfunction? You know, we got it today. I saw a thing the other day where a... Uh, Seemed like it was a calf had uh, its twin legs sticking out of its back, you know. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, well, that's if, if meeting one cobra is bad enough. How, how what would a two-headed one be like? But you know, that's the the uh, the pythons and all that. Man, you got a house with kids in it. Thing comes in there, crawls around the kid or the baby. Squeezing them to death before they can even, even know it, and swallows them whole. That's mm. what you know. That's what they're capable of. They're gonna have to put a moratorium on those things. And like with our hogs around here, man, we got so many wild hogs. Oh yeah. They they tear up ranch land, and they destroy cars. Uh, you don't want to get one after you either. Those things are bad. Hogs are bad to start with, but these these feral hogs, man, they, they can tear you up. Now, but I think anymore it's open season all year long. Hey, now, <laughs> Joe, it's on top of the hour. Do you want to hang around for another half an hour? And, uh, sure. Yeah. Okay, well, we're going to go for a break. This time it's going to be about eight minutes long. Uh, we have a station break, and then James is going to give the last news uh, for the night. And uh, we'll be back with Joe Taylor. So, everybody, you know, just chill. Get yourself a nice cup of Java. Find a nice easy chair. Get that blanket. Get that fire turned up and... Well, get ready to talk more about two-headed snakes and who knows what else. We'll be back in a few minutes. You're listening to Gary on Night Dreams Talk Radio After Dark. stream 